Okay, so we're going to start with an example about how to prove trig identities when there are complex fractions involved. So a complex fraction is just a fraction inside of a fraction. Okay, so just as always, we're going to start by working with one side and leave another side alone. So we're going to pick the side with the fraction on it because there's a lot more going on, which means that we have more to work with. So we're going to start by changing all of our tangents and cotangents into sines and cosines. So we're going to rewrite tangent of x to be sine of x over cosine of x plus sine of y over cosine of y all over, and cotangent is just the opposite, so it's going to be the cosine of x over the sine of x plus the cosine of y over the sine of y. And that's all going to equal our tangent of x, tangent of y. Okay, so now you're probably like, whoa, there's four fractions, a giant fraction, there's too many fractions. Okay, so we're just going to not stop, we're going to keep going forward. So the best way to deal with fractions is to get rid of the fractions. So you can always get rid of the fractions by multiplying into the, both the numerator and denominator by something that will cancel with the fractions. So we want to cancel these little denominators here, cosine of x, cosine of y, and sine of x times sine of y. So we're going to multiply in by this fraction over here. So we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator of the big overall fraction by, we, well, we want to co uh, cancel with these cosines first. So let's just deal with those first. So if I want to deal with cosine of x, if I want to cancel that, I have to multiply in by cosine of x. And I want to multiply in by cosine of y because I need that to cancel. And I'm just going to put that over 1. I'm going to do the same thing in the bottom because otherwise I would change the value of my fraction and that is not what I want. So I'm going to distribute in to both my numerator and my denominator. And when I get that, I am going to get cosine of x, cosine of y, times the sine of x, all over the cosine of x, plus cosine of x, cosine of y, times the sine of y, all over the cosine of y. And then we're going to get what goes on our bottom. So we're going to get cosine squared x, because we have two of them, cosine of y, all over the sine of x, plus cosine of x, cosine squared of y, all over the sine of y. So now we're going to go through and cancel what we can. So again, that still equals our tangent of x, tangent of y. Okay, so here I have cosine of x, cosine of x, they go away, cosine of y, cosine of y, they go away. I still can't get rid of anything in the bottom. And instead of just rewriting a whole other line, we're just going to go ahead and multiply in by some other stuff. So we're going to squish this into the side here. So now I need to cancel with these sine x and sine y's in my denominator. So to do that, I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to multiply in by sine of x, sine of y, all over 1, and sine of x, sine of y, in the bottom, all over 1. And because we just went through an example of what happens when you are distributing through, we're not going to write every step out again. We're just going to straight multiply through and see what happens. So in the top, I'm going to get cosine of y, sine squared of x sine of y plus then I'm gonna get cosine of x sine of x sine squared of y all over in the bottom I'm gonna get cosine squared x cosine of y times the sine of y and I'm going to get cosine of x cosine squared of y times the sine of x. Okay, so now we want to see if we can kind of pull anything out. Again, that is still all equal to tangent of x times tangent of y. Okay, so we're going to start 
pulling things out and seeing what happens. Okay, so let's look for to see if we have anything in common in both the numerator and the denominator. So it looks like in the numerator we have a sine of x and a sine of y in both of them. And then we also in the bottom we have a cosine of x and a cosine of y in both of them. So let's pull those out, let's factor those out and see what happens. So if we factor out sine of x, sine of y in the top, we're going to be left with cosine of y sine of x plus cosine of x sine of y and then we're all going to be left in the bottom. Let's see, so if we factor out we have a cosine of x in both of them and a cosine of y in both of them. We're going to be left with sine of y cosine of x plus cosine of y sine of x and that again is supposed to all equal our tangent of x times tangent of y. I don't know why up here they have two of them. Okay, so if you look carefully notice that cosine of y sine of x, that's the same thing as cosine of y sine of x down here, and because it's addition, we could flip the order around, and we have cosine of x sine of y here, and that's the same thing as this term, and again, because it's addition, the order of addition doesn't matter. So look, I could actually cancel these out, because I have one on the top and one at the bottom, and I'm going to be left with, we're going to go up to the top of the slide again, because I'm running out of room, so all the way up here. So we're left with sine of x sine of y over cosine of x cosine of y equals tan of x tan y, but hey, we know tangent is just sine over cosine, so I have a sine of x over cosine of x, that's tangent of x, and I have a sine of y over cosine of y, though that's tangent of y, and after all that work and all of those hard fractions which we got rid of, to make it not so hard, we have what we want. So boom, we're done. That's an example with complex fractions.